Okay, so today we'll uh, discuss series and parallel piping. Okay, so as we discussed several times that uh, series and parallel piping is very important topic in pipeline engineering. So we'll again recall that uh, what are the actual component that can influence the total pressure required to transport liquids. We know already that if we see the equation, we see the flow rate, liquid specific gravity, viscosity, pipe diameter, wall thickness, roughness, uh, pipe length, and pipe elevation changes. Now, if we see that total pressure required and what are the component they component actually influence the, uh, influence the total pressure, that is we already know friction head, elevation head, and delivery pressure at terminal. So we can see these things in an example. See here, in the example, in the example, uh, if we see that there's a um, pipeline and pump station A and terminus B, and there's an elevation at point C. So if we take the example that a 50 mile long pipeline from point A to B transport diesel fuel, uh, the specific gravity of the diesel is 0.85, uh, at a flow rate 5,000 dial per hour. If the total pressure drop due to friction in the pipeline is 900 PSI, the elevation difference is like 600 feet, and the minimum delivery pressure required at the terminus B is 50 PSI, then yeah, based on the equation, we can easily calculate that uh, total pressure required. So what is the total pressure required? Definitely 900 PSI plus six, 600 feet into 0 0.85 by 2.31. Remember this equation, how to convert this feet to PSI. That equation we are applying here, plus 50 PSI. So what we'll get, we'll get a certain value. It's, uh, maybe I can tell you the value here. Uh, is the value is uh, one zero, uh, sorry, 1171. Now, if we consider, if we consider the elevation and other factors, and if we again recalculate, just considering all these points, all these factors, we'll see again, we'll get the, same value. Let's see. Now, suppose an intermediate point C is located halfway between A and B. So, if it is like 50 mile uh, pipeline, then it's 20 uh, at the 25 mile there is a uh, elevation. Okay, and this uh, total elevation is 1600 feet compared with the elevation point A. So, in A there is a 100 feet elevation, and in B there is a 700 feet elevation. Okay. And so C becomes a controlling factor. Now, how to calculate the total pressure required at A to transport the liquid? So, as I said, that uh, you can follow the uh, Sosi Menon book 178 to 181 pages. There's a good uh, calculation is given there. And again, I will tell you the actual calculation how we'll get this uh, result. So, as we see that 900 psi pressure is a friction pressure law. So total 50 mile pipeline. So per mile, what is the friction loss? We can get 900 minus, divided by 50. How much? 18 PSI per mile. Okay. So the total friction pressure drop of the piles, uh, pipe segment from A to C located 25 meter away is given by 18 into 25 because 18 PSI per mile. So at point C, how much it will be? 18 into 25, so 450 PSI. Now, as I said, that point A, this is 100, 100 feet uh, up, okay? So if we calculate the elevation, uh, elevation difference, A to C, 1600 minus 100 feet, okay? And now if we con convert this 1500 feet, 1600 minus 100 feet to convert to PSI, so what will happen? 1500 into 0.85 by 2.31. Now, total pressure. So we have already 450 PSI from the frictional pressure drop, pressure drop and plus 1500 into 0.85 by 2.31. So we will get 1001.95 PSI. Or maybe we can say that 1002 PSI. Now, when we reach to point C, there's a very important point that is the vapor pressure. So when you are transporting some liquid which has very high vapor pressure, maybe 200, uh, 300 PSI vapor pressure, we have to consider. If your vapor pressure, you will not constrain the pipeline transportation, then there may be um, accident happen. 
usually if i if we are talking about the crude oil transportation so vapor pressure may be like 10 to 20 psi so we have another additional point 10 psi so 1002 plus 10 psi the total pressure will be 1012 psi okay now at the point of c okay we will see that uh, the delivery pressure at the terminus b how much we require so we have already at the point c we have the vapor pressure 10 now from 1600 to 700 feet difference okay so that is also 10 plus 1600 minus 700 into 0.85 by 2.31 okay and we have already 450 psi at the a point we have to deduct this value so the final will get 10 plus 1600 minus 700 into 0.85 by 2.31 minus 450 and we'll get minus 109 value but it's negative so if it is negative value then we cannot compensate the actual pressure record at the point b so pressure record at point a how much it will be 1012 I mean 1012 plus 50 psi because 50 psi is the delivery pressure plus 109 109 so that will be again 1171 so you just see if you calculate in this way and if you calculate just considering the three parameters both are same so the question may come that okay proof that if we consider the elevation uh, including the vapor pressure the total pressure required to transport a liquid from point A to B is equal to considering only frictional pressure, elevation pressure, uh, elevation head pressure, and delivery pressure. So this way you have to take one example and you have to prove. Okay, so this is a one example. So I think it's clear. And even if you go through the um, Sassimilan book, it's very clearly stated here. So if we see that uh, pressure at point A, 1171 psi, point C, 169 169 how we, how we'll get this one 10 psi as c point 50 psi is the delivery pressure okay plus 109 so if you add all this then you will get 169 and tv is already given that 50 psi for your delivery pressure okay so hope it is clear now let's go to another point that is uh, hydraulic pressure gradient so usually uh, we are talking about the temperature gradient, pressure gradient. This is the that's a difference. Okay, if you have a low pressure and high pressure, then the difference between low and high pressure will give the pressure gradient. But here in the pipeline, how we can consider the pressure gradient? Uh, you can see this figure that there's a pipeline, I mean piping system, uh, from uh, down to up. And if you put two tubes in two portion, what you will see that the fluid inside the pipe will come up okay maybe in case of the down uh, bottom i mean uh, down uh, line it will be high and in the up it will be so if you draw a line from this point to this point this will be the pressure gradient so hydraulic pressure gradient is the graphical representation of the variation of pressure along the along the uh, pipeline okay along the pipeline so we'll use that uh, in different cases how pressure gradient will work okay now if we take some example like pump station a and there's a terminus b we'll see that this type of pressure gradient you can get okay and now here there's a very good example okay there's a very good example we have to deal with that what is the example Suppose in this figure, okay, point A, C, and B. In this figure, uh, if we see that total pressure, PT, as we said already, friction pressure plus elevation pressure plus delivery pressure. So here, once we'll see that uh, if we con uh, connect this friction pressure with the discharge pressure, suction pressure, what we'll get? Suppose this PT, this PT equal to up to PD plus PD minus PS. Okay, according to this geometry, you can say that PT equal to PD plus PD minus PS. So what we'll get, if we just rearrange the equation, we'll get PD equal to PT plus PS by two. And that equation we have to use for some calculation. So if we uh, say that, uh, suppose uh, we can take one example, 
and just to apply this uh, hydraulic pressure gradient and i prepared one example numerical based on the uh, calculation given in the sasinian book see this example suppose initial flow rate of a diesel fuel in a 100 mile long pipeline is 5000 barrel per hour flowing from point a to b okay think again 100 mile long pipeline is uh, flowing uh, 5000 barrel per hour from a to b the pipe elevation head from a to b is 300 psi so one result one uh, value you are also getting that is the elevation okay 300 psi the total pressure and maop so remember again maop maximum allowable operating pressure that is very very important if your maximum allowable operating pressure is less than the flowing pressure total pressure then your pipe will be bust okay so we have to consider this so it's given 1800 psi and 1200 psi respectively the minimum suction pressure is 50 psi the delivery pressure at point b terminus is also 50 psi now calculate the maximum flow rate that can be increased based on the provided MAOP. okay so this is the question i made from the sustainable book and uh, if you go through the book uh, page number 183 to page number 184 uh, that problem is already solved here so this is on homework you will go through the ppt this uh, problem maybe i think i didn't put this problem in my previous ppt i will send you into the google uh, classroom okay so what you have to do here first you have to find the pd i mean the discharge pressure how you get 1800 is the total pressure plus 50 psi by two so you will get 50 psi or why because 50 psi is the uh, discharge pressure okay section uh, uh, discharge pressure okay so you get uh, 900 to uh, 25 okay psi now now you have to use that equation total pressure equal to friction pressure plus elevation pressure plus delivery pressure from that equation you can get the friction pressure drop okay i'm just giving the hints and now if you think you calculate the friction or pressure drop per mile we have the 100 mile long pipeline so you can get from there uh, how much is the pressure drop per mile okay now we have one equation that uh, pm that is pm i mean the total pressure drop that is equivalent to q square and if we consider the other parameters are constant we will get that pm equal to k into q square Okay, so K is a one, one constant based on the fluid, uh, fluid properties. So from there, you can again calculate this Q. Okay, I'm not going through this all calculation, but you have to try, okay? And next day, we will discuss, and if you have any problem on this, uh, on this calculation, I will discuss. So, now, uh, let's think about the series piping and liquid piping, uh, in liquid pipeline. Series piping, when you are talking that, uh, suppose we have one uh, NPS 14 and NPS 16, 16. Guys, I think you can remember NPS 14 and 16, okay? The diameter is 14 and diameter is 16. So once you will connect 14 and 16, okay? And maybe other 20 in this way, uh, then you will get a series pipe system. But how could you connect? Because in 14, NPS 14, your diameter is lower than the NPS 16. So for that particular case, we have to use one reducer. It's called 14 into 16 inch reducer. Because once you put this uh, reducer in the 16 inch pipe and other part of this reducer that can connect the 14 inch pipe. So in this way, if we use the reducer, we will, con uh, we will connect different piping and we'll get a long piping system. Okay, so uh, when different lengths of pipes are joined end to end, the pipe are set to be series. Okay, pipeline economics often determine uh, what pipe computers are need to be used because uh, pipeline con economics we will discuss. Okay, we have one uh, class I think I can conduct that uh, that uh, there we will discuss the pipeline economics uh, based on the diameter. So at time different pipe segment may have some outside diameter but different inside diameter uh, because of the wall thing. So maybe the outside diameter of the different segment of the pipe is the same, but the inside, okay, because due to the uh, wall thickness, okay. Now, here we will see 
that uh, if a pipe A of length L A and inside diameter D A is connected in the series with pipe B of length L B and inside diameter D B, then how to calculate the equivalent length? Okay, if we calculate the equivalent length, then we can see that uh, this is the length, then we can calculate the length, I mean uh, pressure drop, okay. So uh, we can say that the equivalent length of the pipe is LE and diameter is DE. So the equivalent length of the pipe may be based on either DA or TE because we have to convert in a single diameter pipe. Okay, not like D and DB. Okay, if you have these things, then you can also uh, calculate the equivalent length. So let's uh, remember this equation that PM equal to uh, some constant into F into L into Q square is G by DI to the power pi. I think uh, you have a confusion when you see, you will go to the book that they said that is 8.1 for equation, but that equation is for the uh, unique length, okay, unit length. So that's why L is not considered there. So you have to use here L. Now, if we say that uh, PM equivalent uh, pipe equal to PM A and PM B, I mean for pipeline pipe A and pipe B. And once you put this equation in both right and left side, you will see that AB equals to, or maybe uh, maybe LA by uh, D equals to uh, D to the five equals to LA by D to the five, okay, plus LB uh, by D to the five, okay, and uh, we can set also D equal to GA because this is the diameter of the equivalent pipeline and also GA diameter is a bit the same, and we can get the final equation L equals to LA plus LB into GA by D b to the power 5. So this is the final equation. There's no uh, different calculation, different uh, type of uh, numeri numerical, but yeah, based on this equation, we can do some numerical. Okay, so uh, this is the concept of series pipe, piping into a pipeline system, and this is the liquid uh, equivalent length. Okay, and this is the figure. So hopefully you can understand these things and we can do some numericals. Okay, I think uh, there's not uh, very big equation that you have to remember this is all about the concept okay and very small equations that you can easily remember and you can apply your uh, understanding for the problem solving uh, now if we have the flow rate different okay suppose uh, maybe the flow rate is different the flow rate is same that q has been eliminated eliminated now uh, let's see the head loss okay the, if you can remember the head loss equation h equal to F L by D D1 square by 2G. Okay. So in this case, the total head loss will be for the pipeline one, two, and three. And there's some other parameter. I will show you that in the next slide. When there is a sudden expansion, how what is sudden expansion? You have pipe one here, and suddenly you see that pipe two has different diameter. And again, pipe three has different diameter. So if you have a sudden expansion, so we have a particular equation for the sudden expansion. Uh, HL equal to V1 minus V2 square by 2G equal to 1 minus A1 by A theta square into V1 square by 2G. And now we have question sir, how it comes from this one because we know that V1 A1 equal to V2 A2. Can you remember this equation? A1 V1 equal to A2 V2. So just uh, uh, remove the V2, okay, in, in terms of V1, and you'll get this, okay. So try this one. Okay, so V1 minus V2 square by 2G equal to 1 minus A1 by A2 square uh, into V1 square by 2G. And sudden contraction, there's another equation, 1 by C of C minus 1 to the square V2 square by 2G. And C, C is the contraction coefficient. Okay, so you can just remember these things. Uh, I think we are not going for the sudden con contraction. What will happen if your flow is going from right to left and there's some expansion? Once your flow is coming from out uh, opposite side, that will be sudden contraction. Okay. And uh, next one, the parallel piping in the liquid pipeline. Okay. Parallel piping in the liquid pipeline. So there we will just follow two assumptions. One is the conservation of the total flow, and another is the common pressure loss across each pi parallel pipe. So here you can see that. Uh, uh, piping system A to B, and again it's uh, another branch, another segment is uh, in the C way, another in the D way. So here Q, and here QBC and QBD. So if we uh, just apply the conservation of total flow, 
that q equal to q b c plus q d okay and pressure drop in the branch like b c e that is p b minus p e so if we say that p b is the pressure here and p b p b p is the pressure here and p b is the pressure here then we will get pressure drop in branch g d also p minus p because they started from the same place and ending at the same place now uh, q equals to if we just uh, see that q b c plus q b d plus q b because here we are taking another another parallel line okay here it's not showing so if we connect another line that b to e then q b c q d d q d so delta b c equal to delta p b and delta p b okay with the common pressure law that was the pipe line oh, sorry so all are same okay now same using the same equation like 8.14 you get delta p equal to uh, equivalent equal to k into l by u square d to the pi okay so this, so this is uh, not for your derivation but this is the final equation okay and uh, from here we can also we can move uh, to the other equation that once we put this value in this equation p e q p b c p b d then we'll get sorry we'll get this equation now if we simplify that k is same everywhere so l e q square by d to the 5 uh, l b c q b c square by d b c to the 5 equal to l b d q b c square by d b to the 5 okay if we uh, assume that the pipe branches are all equal length then all are same so what do you get q square by d to the 5 equal to q b c square by d b c to the 5 q b d to square by uh, d b d to the 5 okay now if you use the equation 9.9 uh, i'm saying here just go through the again the um, uh, session in book where you will see that 9.9 .9 equation is this one okay uh, q equal to q b c plus q b d okay and if you put it here then you will get this equation and from here you just uh, we just uh, we can rearrange and you will get q b c square by um, d b c to the 5 equal to q minus d c to the 5 by d b to the 5 so this is the equation so now if you know like uh, like uh, um, d c d b c and d b d and q b c then you can calculate the different individual flow rate so that is the equation that will be used for the numerical now here we are taking another example same like the when the parallel piping are in the, uh, are attached here q1 q2 q3 different flow rate as i said that total q equal to q1 q2 q3 because here we are considering other extra and i said that is same like so for l1 pipe like f1 l1 by d1 d1 square by 2g plus these things this is for the if there is any minor loss okay if there is any fitting or something so for all cases we are using other additional component okay uh, sum of k1 is the sum of all local fitting losses in pipe one and so forth okay so in this way we can guess also this type of equation okay so you can use all this equation and you can calculate the total head loss okay and now we can see one example i think on that time i didn't provide this problem okay so let's see the example here for the three parallel piping in 2.16 figure, okay, this is the figure, I'm considering 2.16 figure. Assume that water flowing to the pipe at 80 degrees Fahrenheit, discharge U is 2 CFS, okay, centimeter cubic feet per second. The pipe diameters G1, D2, and G3 are 4, 6, and 8 inches, respectively. The pipe length L1, L2, L3 are 1000 feet, all are same. The pipe material is still, and the local head losses are negligible. So once the local head losses are negligible, then this, in this equation, this portion will not be considered, okay? Uh, now, find the discharge Q1, Q2, and Q3, and head loss across the parallel pipe. The relative roughness of the three pipes are E1 by D1 equal to 0.045, E2 by D2 equal to 0.030 and E3 by D3 equal to 0225. Uh, why I'm giving this relative roughness? Because you have to use here again the Moody's diagram. Okay. Because uh, you have to calculate the Reynolds number. Once you get the Reynolds number, 
and I think you can recall the Moody's diagram. So you have the Reynolds number, you know the effective ramus. So go to that uh, that curve and see the friction factor. Okay, because you have friction factor here. Okay, F1, F2, F3. Okay, so in this way you have to calculate F1, F2, F3. And V1 and V2, V3, okay, you have to calculate from here. Okay, so this is a one example and you have to try. So this is another homework, okay. And this, uh, this is very important example. Okay, so based on that parallel piping concept, you have to do this example. Next time, sometimes we will solve this uh, problem or maybe I can send you the solution, but uh, again, you have to try, okay? Uh, don't think that always I will provide all this uh, sol solution and we'll just play this, okay? This is your time, you have to try, okay? And you have lots of time right now in your home. Okay, so another problem that is also taken from the Sasiminam, you can uh, practice this problem. Okay, I took this example from Sasiminam. So this is for your homework also. Uh, now come to the another point that is the transporting of the high vapor pressure liquid. This is just a simple concept why I'm giving. Suppose you don't have the concept and you don't have the idea about the vapor pressure of the particular fluid that you want to transport from to the pipeline, okay? And uh, your uh, inlet, uh, inlet pressure or maybe the um, uh, injecting pressure is less than that vapor pressure. So what will happen? Does the accident happen? Okay, so if you know the vapor pressure is very high, then you have to manage the pressure of the target in this. So you have said the transportation of high vapor pressure liquid such as liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, requires that a certain minimum pressure be maintained throughout the pipeline. This minimum pressure must be greater than the liquid vapor pressure at the flowing temperature to prevent vaporization that could damage the pump. Okay. Suppose let's uh, have an example. If the vapor pressure of LPG at a flowing temperature is 250 psi, the minimum pressure in the pipeline must be greater than 250 psi. At high elevation points or peaks along the pipeline, the pipeline pressure must not fall below. 250 psi. Okay. Also, at the delivery terminal, the pressure must satisfy the minimum pressure requirement. So that's why that uh, the high vapor pressure liquid transportation is very important, and you should have the knowledge of vapor pressure how to compensate this. Okay. So this will um, therefore require even high higher minimum pressure compared with the vapor pressure of the liquid. Hence, both the delivery pressure and the minimum pressure must be considered uh, when analyzing pipelines transporting high vapor. Okay, so uh, pumping power required in pipeline, this is very simple concept and you have already idea of the horsepower. Okay, but still we have to recapitulate these things and there's some important numerics is here also. Uh, I think you have already knowledge that uh, one HP is defined as the 33,000 foot pound per minute or 550 foot pound per second, okay. It's just divided by 60 and you get 550 foot pounds per second. And uh, here, if you see in the SI units, uh, energy is usually measured in joules, and the power is used per second, watt, or sometimes we use the large unit kilowatt. Now, let's uh, have an example. Consider a situation where, uh, where 150,000 gallon of water per hour is to be raised 600 feet to supply the uh, needs of a small community. So what will be the work done the work done in lifting 150,000 gallon of water by 600 feet in one hour is equal to this. If you see the calculation, that specific weight of water is 62.34 pounds per feet cube, 1 feet cube 7.48 gallon. So that's uh, 150,000 by 7.48 into 62.34 into 600. That will you get the work done. Once you get the work done, and that divided by the horsepower, okay, and also by minutes, okay, that change to hour to minute, and you get the horsepower as well, okay. So this is also known as the hydraulic horsepower, since we have not considered the pumping efficiency, and if you know the pumping efficiency, then your horsepower, that your horsepower will be uh, is 379 by 0.8, okay. So based on these things, you can do some numerical, definitely, okay. But you have to calculate the horsepower, you have to calculate the uh, pumping efficiency based on these things, you can calculate the actual horsepower required to lift in some uh, fluid uh, 
up to a certain level. Now that term is the brake horsepower. Uh, what is the brake horsepower is uh, usually we account when we have the pump efficiency. Guys, uh, I have given one uh, assignment and I receive only few, okay? But I think you are not taking it seriously. Uh, that is also important because uh, I will count some marks from this assignment. And that assignment actually has been given from the Sassimian book. So all is available with you and you should work on this because I can only consider, uh, only cover the Compression. I think farm part will be covered in your process design something. There's another course. Maybe Ranjan sir will con uh, cover that part. Okay, we'll discuss later. So if a pump efficiency is 75 percent used, then we can calculate the brake horsepower. How? The hydraulic horsepower by pump efficiency. This way we can calculate the brake horsepower. And if we have the motor, if we need to calculate the motor horsepower, that is from a uh, brake horsepower by motor efficiency. And we have a equation that uh, power required is actually Q into H into specific gravity of the liquid by 367 point, okay, this is 0.646 into E. Work is the flow rate, H is the differential uh, head loss, E is the efficiency, is the liquid specific gravity. So this equation is important to remember, okay? Based on the equation, we can do some numbers. And also power in kilowatt, Q into P by 3,600 into Okay, so these two equations are very important. Okay, so this is all about the brake horsepower. Uh, now, in case of liquid pipeline, there's a system head curve. What is system head curve? So we should know that when we are uh, throwing some fluid to the pipeline, then what will happen? We have a particular distance or we have flow rate and according to flow rate how pressure will change okay so once you have a flow rate is increasing your pressure is also increasing so this is one system head curve for a typical liquid okay but if you have the different specific gravity like uh, for an example diesel and gasoline so the diesel has more specific gravity than gasoline so it has a pressure is little bit high okay and now this system curve, I mean, this curve cannot go to the zero because you have always there some elevation of the delivery pressure. If we see in high friction, what will happen that you have some elevation and delivery pressure here, and then you have friction. So you can convert, I mean, you can calculate the friction, pressure drop, elevation and delivery, and you'll get this type of curve. So uh, if I will give that different types of friction value, elevation value, uh, delivery value, and pressure and flow rate. So you have to draw based on this data, not to scale. There may be one is different specific gravity fluids, one is uh, different friction, uh, value, friction, pressure value. But if you have a totally different things, friction is very low and elevation and delivery is high. So what will happen? First your elevation and delivery will be high here and friction will be down. Okay, so one example is given also in the in the Sassinian book, and uh, I am also teaching this thing from the Sassinian, so you can get also information from this book. Okay, and next thing is that suppose we have a pipeline A to B to B to F. Okay, and now we have an injection, we have a delivery, I mean, sudden injection, okay, in intermediate. Here, there's an example that A to B, B to C, C to E, and D. So, here there's a, um, I mean, and delivery here, there's another delivery, there's another injection. So if it happens, so what will happen, suppose if we take an example in from A, what should be the delivery pressure or delivery flow rate, okay, to get the uh, liquid in the F. I think before mid-semester I show you this type of graph, um, graph uh, for the panhandle equation A and B, okay. So here also the same concept, if you have like Q100 and here Q100, so here, it will be 200 in B, in this plus B. So here is 200 is going and here, there's a maybe 50 is uh, delivery. So here it is coming 150, okay? So in this way, you can consider this concept, okay? Based on these things, we can uh, have some numerical also. Another thing is that pipeline loop, which was a very simple concept. Uh, a pipeline loop is a length of pipe installed in parallel between two points on a main pipeline. If you see that A to B this is a pipeline and there's a sudden loop here. 
So here this is the main pipeline, this is a loop. The purpose of loop is just to split the flow, okay, to the parallel segment. Because if there's lots of flow in A to B, then maybe there's some uh, tragedy, I mean, there's some damages happen. So if you have a loop, then there will be reduce of the flow rate and piping flow rate and also exhaust system. So this is the concept of pipeline loop in the liquid pipeline. And based on this loop, we have one problem. And this problem also from the Sasimenon book, okay? So if you consider this problem, then this in this problem, you can use your all concept. First, you have to calculate the Reynolds number, then total pressure drop, then again the Reynolds number total pressure drop, and also horsepower, okay? I mean, uh, break horsepower. So this numerical you can also try, okay? And this is very simple. I, I don't think that is very complicated, okay? And given also a relative roughness here, from the movie diagram, you can find the uh, important parameter. Okay, so that is actually up to liquid pipeline. Okay, now we have also gas pipeline. So uh, today we will just take some question guys from you, and let's see uh, if you have any doubts. So we can go to the question, but one by one. Okay. Yes. Hey guys, you are talking, huh? <laughs> guys, uh, so uh, today we complete just liquid flow in uh, parallel and series piping. Okay. So it is too complicated. Okay, just if you have any doubt, then then let's uh, discuss for some time, and then in the next class we'll discuss about that. That's pipeline system. This is almost same, but today I am not covering. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Smith, Dixit, yes, sir. Uh, yes. So, so is it clear? I mean, it's not too complicated. I think. <laughs> Hello. Yes, Paul. Yes, sir. I have one doubt. Yes, yes. Sir, you said earlier that if the elevation in the case of uh, elevation equal to 600 feet, mm -hmm. uh, the total pressure required at the, uh, the terminal A equal E C M. If uh, there is uh, no elevation difference also. Now, I mean, I mean, oh, this calculus on the first time. Okay, we are just thinking in simple way. If we just calculate this, three, uh, add this three pressure, we'll get the value. And once we will go through this type of complicated calculation, we get we will get also the same value. Okay, so mm -hmm. I so I I didn't calculate all these things because in the Simon book, if you go through this book, you will get the all calculation. Okay, mm -hmm. and and that I can uh, make a question like that that if we consider this way, we will get the same value. If we go to that way, we will get the same value. So it's up to you. You can take any type of example. And you can just do the calculation in the exam, okay? Because you should know all about this elevation calculation, vapor pressure calculation, then only you can get the final value. So but this sir, is the concept we, here, actually. Otherwise, sir, this if is we take any other elevation like uh, uh, 1200 feet, you can the take, you can take any. This is actually, I'm giving the same example from here. You can take any type of value here, 1200 feet, here 500 feet in the B, here in the point A, 50. So, but your result should be same. I mean, because they did in such a way, their result are same. But if you take in different way, maybe your result will be not the same. Then you have to also manipulate that value. I mean, in in uh, in case of your uh, friction loss, elevation elevation head and delivery pressure. So this is one thing that you can change the values and you can try that you are getting same or not. Means, sir, uh, the total pressure required at A will be same for the flat terrain and the terrain like this. Yeah. But, sir, if we take 1200 elevation, then the pressure required at A will not be same. No, that is, that is I'm saying now. If you take 1200 elevation, then pressure will be not same. Because this is the one example they put in such a way where you will get the same value. But you have to first think about the first three values, okay? The three values, once you will add, whatever the value you will get, then you have to also manipulate this value accordingly. 
But here yeah, they wanna show that if you have this type of scale, okay, where you are calculating the total pressure loss and also considering this uh, peak, all these things, or all, all this hydraulic pressure gradient, you are also getting the same thing. Okay, sir. Mm. And sir, in the, mm -hmm. the series and parallel piping, mm -hmm. uh, can we consider friction factor F? Yeah, the last time I think we were discussing these things, you know, they just again I am telling you. Uh, here, here uh, the friction factor, if it is like 0 0.01, okay, like here, hmm. if you say like F E, F A and F B, okay, so it's like 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01 is coming, right? Like, like F. Sorry, in example one, when uh, when we calculate F A equal to 0 0.044 mm -hmm. and F B equal to 0 0.05. So zero four and zero five, okay? Yes, sir. So uh -huh. when we calculate the equivalent length by considering the friction factor, it is differing from the from the real value by calculating the value by this equation by twenty two hundred feet. So how much will be the difference? I mean, if you see, if you if you uh, see, I mean, if you say like F E, okay, equivalent friction factor F A for uh, pipeline A, F B for pipeline B. Okay, mm -hmm. so suppose this is your pipeline A, B, and uh, yeah, sorry, uh, F, F, e, A, F, and B. Uh, A and B. So the friction mm -hmm. throughout the pipe they are considering as uh, same. Okay, but mm -hmm. if it is at, as it is low, okay, point zero five is very high because I told you the friction factor is always lies from point zero one to point zero two to calculate, and if you see that uh, graph. Uh, Moody's yeah, diagram yeah, or any type of uh, table you get, okay, so it's not uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, okay. So that, that's why when we can just And here, as I said, say that the different flow rates, okay, and this one is actually is coming for the total total friction factor calculation. So based on this thing, if you uh, if you do this numerical, this one, again you will get something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Hey, what about other guys? Sir. Yes, yes. Sir. Sir, so we calculate the value L E by considering friction factor. Mm -hmm. Then I get to two thousand two hundred seventy more than the value calculated without considering L. I mean in this um, series piping? Yes, sir. Example one of Shashi Menon book. Example one of uh, Sasimian book. No, they are not giving the friction factor here. They are giving the friction factor value. Hello? They are giving the friction factor value here. How much they are giving? Sir, I have calculated friction factor value by considering roughness of 0 0.02. Point zero, no, 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 point zero 0.02. Why? Because it's always point zero 0.01. You can consider point zero 0.01. Then, then see, okay? Point two zero two not, okay? Always is point zero 0.02. Okay, not just like point uh, 0.2. Okay, sir. Means, uh, you, you just try again, okay? I, I think it, it, it will... It will be like uh, almost same value. Okay. okay sir. Just, uh, so, just you can take you can take point zero one one or point zero one one like from the uh, table that I provided on that time before mid semester. Yes sir. yes sir. And then I will get back to you again. Okay sir. Okay. Okay. So today we can stop here, guys. Hello. Okay, thank you guys.